Hello and welcome to Inside USF Basketball. I'm your host, Pat Olson, as we sit down with fifth year USF head coach Rex Walters. The Dons start their season tonight against Stanford at uh, Oracle Arena. And coach, before we get into the matchup tonight, you just come off a, a two game exhibition season, wins over both uh, San Francisco State and uh, UNC Pembroke. Uh, sort of uh, talk about the, the two uh, game uh, exhibition campaign. Well, SF State was, was a good game for us. You know, it was a a little bit of a hostile environment with, with San Francisco State bringing a lot of fans over. So we had to you know deal with that. And they have some good players and well-coached team. Um, so guard play was an issue, uh, keeping Nephi in front of, a, in front of us. And, and then they have some guys that can really shoot it as well. So it was a great challenge. And, and also, you know you're going to get SF State's best uh, effort in terms of they're going to be fired up to play against us. So. You know, we weathered that, did some good things. I didn't think defensively we were as good as we wanted to be. Transition defense wasn't as good as what we wanted to be. Uh, it was much better against Pembroke. Saying that, you know, I, I preface it by saying they played Stanford just the day before us, and they're playing on a little bit of tired legs. So we were able to kind of jump them. We did a lot of good things, but, but uh, you know, I just, I, I just thought that they were worn down a little bit. And, and we played well. We, we played really well. And um, so we'll take it. You know, I thought that, that playing on our home court, uh, was good for us getting some game experience from some of our young guys, and it's something that we feel we can build off of. You mentioned the youth, and you have a, a number of young players. You know, they're, they're going to get under the lights in a big building here tonight against, uh, or, against Stanford at Oracle Arena. And how do you expect them to react to that challenge? I really don't know. I, I really don't know. You know, I, I know that they're all chomping at the bit and, and, and ready to get out there. And, and uh, we scrimmaged Stanford last year, a little different team. They, they lost some post play, lost some senior leadership, but they can really score. They got, they've got great guard play uh, at Stanford and, and also some, some size that, that uh, we obviously haven't faced in the exhibition season. So it'll be a tough matchup. I, I want our guys to let it rip and, you know, do the things that we work on every day in practice. And if they do that and we play the way we're capable of, we'll have a chance. What things uh, concern you about Stanford as you get ready for the game tonight? They can really shoot it. You know, uh, you know, Randall and Bright can really, really shoot the basketball. We've got to chase them off the three-point line the best that you can. Um, you know, they, they've got size that we don't have. I think that they're really good in turnover transition. They're really good at attacking the offensive glass. And, and like I said, with, with Bright, Randall, and, and John Gage, he's a, he's a really skilled four or five. I don't know if he's a four or five, but he's, he's really tall. <laughs> and he shoots threes. So, uh, you know, and then Josh Hustis, I know he's ready for a breakout year for them. So they've got a lot of pieces. And they've got, they had a great recruiting class, you know, Grant Verhoeven. Um, Christian Sanders, I mean, Roscoe Allen, you know, guys that, that quite honestly wouldn't even talk to us. They, they, they wanted to go to Stanford. And, uh, so, you know, we've got, some, we've got some things that we're going to have to work towards in terms of personnel to try to give ourselves the best chance. Great opportunity for your team to play at uh, Oracle Arena against, uh, you know, a, a, a good program here in the Bay Area. Would you like to get more opportunities to play, you know, Stanford, Cal Moore, the big uh, name schools around the Bay Area and keep it more local? I was talking about it today on radio. Just, just uh, it'd be great to have a have something like this every year for all the schools in the Bay Area, and then have some type of challenge because I think that that would only, well, you know, with the pro town that we are, with the Giants, what they did, the Niners, what they're doing, the A's, the Raiders, the Warriors, to have something that gets uh, the college atmosphere really going. Where you got Stanford, Cal, St. Mary, Santa Clara, us, San Jose State, Pacific. Who in Fresno State? You, you, you put all those teams together on a weekend, on a Saturday, Sunday. It's going to get a lot of people talking and excited about college basketball. So, uh, I hope someday someone has the guts to put it all together and and uh, the organization to put it all together because that would be unbelievable. I know in Philadelphia, I played there a few years. You know, Big Five basketball is huge, and there's a reason why people are excited about it. When you still have the Sixers, the Phillies, the Eagles. They're still really excited about college basketball in a town like Philadelphia. Let's talk about some of the individuals on your team. We've talked uh, on the radio programs that we've done before and after, you know, your two exhibition games about, you know, Doolin and Dickerson, your returning guys from last year, you're going to rely heavily on them. And we saw what they did in your exhibition games. And then probably the new guy that might emerge to enter into that big three, if you want to call him that, will be a D.N. Parker. Uh, discuss all three of those guys because they really, I felt, all three of them have played, pr you know, pretty good basketball in those exhibition games. No, the three Ds, the, th the three. Are, the three D's are pretty good, you know. Uh, obviously, Cody has a better sense of, of he's got more game experience than the other two, but um, knows how to play, uh, makes everyone else better, um, good leader on the floor, 
Um, you know, Cole has been playing at a really high level. Uh, you know, not just scoring the basketball, but rebounding it. Been done a great job with that, um, and scores it in a lot of different ways. And then Dean's given us another element in terms of a guy that that you know, Cole's like that, Cody's like that. Well, Dean's six five. You know, he, he's a six five shooting guard that can post it. He can he can score it off the bounce. He's shot in the ball. He shot the ball from three really well. So. You know, those three guys, yeah, the ball is going to be in their hands uh, quite a bit. But we've got other guys that can knock down shots as well, and you got to feed off of them. So it, it's been a fun group. It's been a fun group to coach. You know, we'll see how much fun it is when we play Stanford. You mentioned knocking down shots, and nothing replaces the ability to make shots. And you have, it seems to me, more guys this year that can knock down the three-point field goal, more depth with guys like Adams, and, you know, coming off the bench, and Dirksen with that left-handed shot that can knock down that three-point field goal. And that can keep you in ball games, can it? It can. You know, it does start on the defensive end, and, 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 and we've been really harping on that. We don't, we don't talk about the offense a whole lot, really. I mean, we're, we're pretty simple. But uh, if we can guard it and then we get ball reversals and paint touches, that's when a guy like Chris Adams becomes really, really valuable. A guy like Tim Dirksen becomes really valuable. You know, Tal can shoot it, although, you know, we want him more block to block, but he can shoot it. Frank Rogers can step out there a little bit. Uh, you know, we haven't seen the best of Mark Tolufson yet. Mark, Mark's a good player. And, and uh, you know, once he gets really used to playing again, it's really been a year for him since he's been on the court. But he brings an element of that. So we've got some guys that can shoot it. You know, I, I think we're probably a better shooting team than we were last year uh, so far. But we haven't played. We haven't really gotten to the thick of things yet. You mentioned Tao and you talked about Tullifson. Uh, discuss your front line because it's going to be in a little area where you're going to see some growth, uh, certainly over the course of the season. Frank Rogers, athleticism long. He's going to affect shots. You know, Tao, we saw in the second exhibition game a concentrated effort in a few possessions to get him the ball inside. And he's got some post up moves. And you know, what do you see for your front line this season? It's really different. I mean, you got three guys that do it different ways. You know, Matt is strictly back to the basket. Uh, you know, he's going to score it inside five to ten feet. Uh, Frank is a little bit more finesse, a little bit more athletic than the other two, a little more bouncy, not as big as those other two. And then Tao is really big, is very skilled. Um, so they're three totally different types of center, which it's great for me. Um, and we, we didn't have a lot of backup support for Parrish last year. He was really our only post um, that played significant minutes. And then we'd play Cole or Angelo at the five spot. So it's great to have some versatility now with those three guys. And, you know, you know, Paris gave us, would give us 12 a night, you know, pretty much that's what he averaged. I think that we can piece together maybe a little bit more than that if we can get those guys going. Coach, you've talked ever since you've been here on the Hilltop about developing a winning culture. And, you know, certainly the last two years, 39 wins over the last two seasons. But there's a lot of new guys here on, the, on this team. How do you get them to buy into that and buy that concept? And how much are you going to rely on the veteran guys to sort of pass along that idea of, of a winning culture here on the Hilltop? You know, um, last year we could get on Angelo a lot, and he can take it and, and really accepted it. Rashad was really, really competitive. We recruited really competitive guys. The, the guys that that didn't have that, you know, quite honestly, they don't really make it. They don't flourish here, um, to be quite honest. And these guys can take they, they can take criticism. I, I get on them pretty hard. Tim Dirksen's a tough kid. Uh, Matt Christensen's a tough kid. Uh, you know, Cole Dickerson, Cody Doolin. I can I can rip him a new one, and and, and he just keeps coming back. Dan's like that as well. You know, I wish we had Jumbo. I wish we had Matt Glover because he's. He, he might be the, the best uh, to the ball guy I've ever coached, and he's just a transfer. And he, he at times dominates practices, so that's fun. And I don't want to set the bar too hard for him, but but we've got guys that that don't mind being coached, you know. And and so it, it makes it fun for me. It it makes our practices really challenging. Our guys know they have to bring it every single day, and so I don't know if our culture. The only thing we lack is we lack experience. We just lack experience, and Stanford's a good way to start. And and, uh, you know, from there, you just try to keep building. Coach, appreciate the time. Good luck tonight against the Cardinal. Thank you. All right, that'll do it for Inside USF Basketball. I'm your host, Pat Olson, Dons and Cardinal, tonight at Oracle Arena. Mm -hmm.